मुरगम नमस्ते नमस्कार वेलकम बैक टू जल प्रयाग लेट अस टुडे कंटिन्यू ऑन व्हाट वी स्टार्टेड लास्ट टाइम एंड इफ यू रिमेंबर आई हैड स्टार्टेड द रडार प्लॉटिंग सो दैट वाज द फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑन रडार प्लॉटिंग आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट गिविंग यू अ स्मॉल एग्जांपल हाइपोथेटिकल एग्जांपल सो दैट आई कैन शो यू हाउ टू proceed doing the steps so that is why it is written procedure i am going to go to that okay. we have already seen uh, a little bit about uh, relative motion what is rm and uh, what are the condition for rm in the plotting that means my vessel will always be at the center uh, at charlie and uh, will be in uh, north up mode so that your true north faces your 12 o'clock so that was discussed in the last video as a, a brief to give you a fair idea how the whole thing is going to be on the plotting so right now i'm going to take the next step where i'm going to give you an example and let us say that my own course and speed was given to me as 04012 knots and uh, two radar echoes were observed and it was given in the form of range and bearing so you can see two radar range and bearings are given and uh, they are asking me to make a full situation report at 8 12 8 if you remember is a second blips time the echoes time second echoes time that is that is the time where i can finish off the whole uh, question and see what answers can i get by plotting so that is what i'm going to give you a very basic example uh, not too much it is just a the first step of uh, plotting or the easiest question what you can so now before i start the question uh, if you remember last time i shown you on the plotting sheet uh, there are various scales and my aim is to always use the largest scale possible and for this question based on that particular plotting sheet i would have chosen scale 4 because the scale 4 is the largest one and it can uh, cater up to 0 to 6 miles and you can see the largest distance in this question is coming only as 5 miles so i will choose scale 4 uh, this is a diagram made up on the screen itself on the ppt but actually uh, if i ever do any more problem i am going to show you on that sheet itself so you can do it on the sheet itself okay so i am going to use scale 4 and let us start off let us see step by step what to do uh, even this video also i am going to break short uh, 10 to 12 minutes so you might see just one or two more videos to complete the full question so you will not see uh, the whole question done because the time increases so i'm going to stick on to part by part now i'm going to plot the range and bearing points or the echoes i'm going to plot it as a simple cross that that is one of the way to represent so i'm going to use a cross okay uh, the first step i do is take my roller scale and put it on the center and mark it with 077 because that is what is given as 077 degree true now uh, majority of the people what they will do is they will draw a line from the center as 077 and that is what i am drawing i have shown you this line but uh, i have a strong recommendation please avoid drawing this bearing line why because when you start getting more targets let us say three targets you will have plenty of bearing lines and it will create a lot of confusion so you should remove the clutter or you should reduce the clutter so for me this bearing line is a clutter which is not needed all i want is only that blip or the cross so what i will do is uh, if you want you can always draw the bearing line but i suggest later on please rub it off and anyway you will be using a 2b pencil so you can always rub it off but my suggestion is once you uh, see the method there is no need for you to draw the bearing line i'll keep the roller scale then i'm going to take the divider or i will take the compass i told you compass is enough for you in the plotting uh, tools so i can take compass i'm going to go to scale 4 because that is where i've decided i will measure 5 nautical miles and i'll take it from the center and i'm going to mark it like this as a blip and this blip is supposed to be your o so i am going to mark the time and mark the identifier which is your o so this is the first blip i have done the first blip let us do the same thing for the second one okay i already have o with me 
The second one is for 812. And if you remember, the bearing was 055, if, I, if I'm not wrong, 055 or 057. Yeah, 057. So I am going to change the direction of my roller scale. I'm going to change the direction of my roller scale to 057. I'm going to take the compass or the divider for uh, three nautical miles, which was the second range. I'm going to directly plot it. As I said, please avoid the bearing line. See, since I've avoided the first bearing line, the picture looks very clear. Okay. So that is why I said, please avoid the bearing line. So I'm going to take the divider and mark three nautical miles, which is alpha. And I'm going to mark uh, the time also. So I've plotted both the blips. I'm going to remove everything. You will see this is the picture. So this is a very neat and clean picture where all unwanted things are not there. Uh, as I said, if you get multiple targets, you will have a lot of clutter. So let us go to the next step. I have plotted both the blips. Please join O and A and extend it beyond the Charlie. It is your O and A and extend it beyond the Charlie. This vector OA is the first vector what we got and it is called relative motion line. We already discussed a little bit about relative motion line and relative line of approach in the previous video. So I suggest please watch that in the sequence. So I call this RML. This is RML is always marked with double arrows. With your pencil, you can just draw two arrows. Here I'm showing you as a small, small triangle. Why? Because drawing an arrow is difficult for me here. So I'm showing you as two triangles, but you should draw only two arrow, double arrows, okay? Now this vector has got a direction. So that vector direction or RML direction is this. I'm showing you this. This direction, please remember, is very important to realize it is neither own course nor the target course. It is a resultant of those two vectors. So your RML is a resultant, okay? It is called resultant vector. Now from RML, we can get uh, two important results in plotting. That, that is the most important results you need always before you start anything uh, regarding uh, collision avoidance or radar plotting. Okay. And they are CP and TCPA. So let us find out what is the CP and TCP of the target. Let us assume this picture was your real radar and you had the ARPA live ARPA with you. And let us say you did not start ARPA, only live radar was there. All I could have done was to find the CPA from my Charlie, I could have opened up my VRM and made it tangent to this vector. And this distance of the VRM automatically gives me the CTA actually. Okay, but uh, you should realize I don't have the VRM. So this is the tangent point. And I call that November. Okay, so N is the marker for the CPA point. And uh, the distance from Charlie to November is the CPA distance also or CPA range. This is what is the first data I'm asking for CPA. And for measuring this, please remember, I use normally use the same scale, the scale number four. Uh, right now, as I said, I don't have VRM with me on my plotting sheet. So how can you accurately measure and uh, plot the November? So let me show you the best method, okay? There are different methods, but let me show you, and I suggest please do this. Why? Because the errors are very, very limited. So please do this method. Place a roller scale, or you can place a normal scale or whatever you want. Roller scale is better. You place the roller scale along this RML near your Charlie, because your CP is measured only at Charlie. I place it. I Take a set square, you can use that right angle uh, set square. You place it like this. And now slide this roller scale, just adjust and slide so that it comes and touches the Charlie. When it touches the Charlie, you draw a line from Charlie to that roller scale. So when you do it, this is the line you will draw. Wherever this line intersects, the RML, that point is your November. This is the most accurate way you can ever do it. Uh, some people suggest the protractor. You mean, uh, what I mean is by the D, what you have in your... Uh, you can do that, but I don't suggest it because the readings are quite close in your geometry box protractor. You can create more errors in that and your readings can come off. So I suggest please don't do it. 
Okay, use your set square. Now there's a small catch. Sometimes your set square, your geometry box has been used for a long time. And uh, you will see there is one place where you can have issue. That is the edge of your right angle triangle. Your edge of your set square will be worn out. That means it will not be exactly 90 degrees. You will have a curved surface. So please be careful. So what do you do for that? That time, do not place the roller scale exactly on the RML. Please place it with a small gap. I'm going to show you that roller scale. You, uh, uh, sorry, it's so a set square. See, when I place this, can you see in this corner, the edges I've shown as if it is worn out. You will see in your geometry box, it will be worn out. Don't use this because if you use this, your line will come and it will not be a straight line exactly when uh, I touch the RML. That is why I've shifted the roller scale. This is the reason I shifted the roller scale so that always a straight line comes and joins the Charlie and your RML line. So right now, let me show you. Now what I do is with that small gap, I still shift my row, your set square. I bring it. You can see still that small worn out edges there. But now still the line is straight from Charlie to your RML. Why? Because the curved edge is farther away. It is going and touching the roller scale. So it is not near your RML. This is the reason. It is very, very small and trivial reason. But why I'm telling you is uh, a difference of a millimeter or two when you plot your number can give you a wrong CPA also and it can give you a wrong PCP also. So that is why please avoid it. This is, this is a more sensible way, more professional way of finishing up the question. So again, I'm doing it. So in case your set square is not new, please follow this procedure, okay? Now, uh, we saw the vector direction. I told you the vector direction earlier, which is your O to A, that direction which it goes, it is a vector direction, is neither your own course direction nor your. Similarly, a vector has got a direction and a speed. So that means the distance is there, which means that vector speed of OA is neither your own speed nor your target speed, but is a resultant. So this distance, what you do is a relative distance. It is not your distance you are done in 12 minutes, nor the distance done by your target. It is the relative distance done in 12 minutes. Now, this is what I'm going to use as a reference. It is a relative speed. I'm going to use it to find my TCPA, okay? TCPA means how much time will it take for me to reach November? Now, already I know that I'm at alpha, 8, 12, I'm at alpha. All I want to know is how much time will I take to reach November? So what I do is I measure this distance OA in the same scale I'm using for plotting. And I say, this is the relative distance done in 12 minutes, okay? Now my job is to find how much time will it take to uh, achieve alpha November, because that is the distance available to you to reach your TCPA or uh, the CPA point. So if the distance OA, whatever it is, let us say two miles or whatever, if it is in 12 minutes, then how much time will it take to reach AN or finish off AN? I'm going to use a simple ratio. This is what this OA divided by 12, or you can say AN divided by the time. When you calculate this, let us assume you got an answer as eight minutes, okay? Please do not write the answer as eight minutes, even though the radar will, ARPA will show you this, but when we are plotting, we are plotting in all uh, kind of a real time to show you the time, actual time. So then what I'll do is I'll add that eight minutes to 8.12 and report it as 8.20. This is how you should report, okay? So we have found out both CPA and TCPA from the RML. And there's one more thing before I part off to uh, tell you, which is very important, this, uh, CPA range or the line CN is always perpendicular to the arm. Okay, this is a catch. Why? Because there are other things you are supposed to find in radar plotting. And there you will realize that you should uh, be aware that your CN is always perpendicular to the arm. Uh, that's the end of uh, the video for today. As I said, uh, I can't finish off all full question in one go. I'm limiting my time to 10 to 12 minutes. I hope I have done that. I'll catch you soon with the next uh, step. 
so i'm doing step by step you you can see the videos and solve the problem uh, keep watching jal prayag uh, until then uh, welcome namaste namaskar i'll catch you soon with the next episode of the same